finishing up the first three Fast and Furious films. This morning I watch the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. Now this is from 2006, three years after the original. You know, this one they had a lot of time to prep for. None of the original stars return. We got a new location, Tokyo. A new director, Justin Lin. And I have to say that from my understanding of it, this could be the most underrated sequel of all time. You know, because this isn't one anybody really talks up. But Tokyo Drift reignited this dying franchise. This franchise very well could have been dead and unmissed. But Tokyo Drift brought new life into it. So, we got a new lead. It's uh, Lucas Black, I think is his name. Uh, he's on one of the NCIS spinoffs. And uh, he plays this guy, Sean Boswell. He's in America. They've, they've got a lot of uh, bullying in high school. So, you know, it may resonate with contemporary issues here for you guys. Even though hell, it's 10 years ago. But uh, he's kind of being picked on by some jocks. And he's into tuning up cars. He has this this rat car, but hey, it's got some pretty sweet uh, racing slicks on it. And this guy's got a Dodge Viper. It's at least a 2003 with 500 horsepower. And he talks it up and he's like, hey, let's race. And because he saw him looking at his girl. And it, it, it's so hokey. This is really the thing that brings down this movie. It's this opening sequence. Because it's like, Whoever wins gets me. Yeah, she'd really say that. If she was playing the hottest girl in American high school at this time, that would not happen. Granted, they raced to ball with the ball by, uh, oh shit, what's his name? Ex Mr. Pam Anderson. <laughs> Seven years after it was a song, after it was a hit. And so they're going through a housing development but now we're seeing that we have the best racing sequence in the series yet. Already at the beginning of the third movie. That's how much more advanced Justin Lin is with this stuff. They didn't get action directors before. Now they have one. And it looks pretty badass. So they have a scene here. And I, it, it's kind of a bad, bad win for everybody because everybody crashes. They're dinged up uh, at the... I guess they're actually waiting at the police department and uh, Sean's kind of smiling at the chick. You get a little laugh from the audience, surely. But he's like, okay, I know I'm in trouble. What city are we moving to now? We're not moving. Then watch the way this transitions. You have what looks like his reaction to her words, but then you, the, the camera pulls out. It, it dollies out. And we see that he's on like a 747 with a bunch of Asian people. And there you go. He's arriving in Tokyo, hanging out with deadbeat dad. Well, I guess ex-husband, who knows? He's got a concubine, call girl with him. And we're learning about Japan. People are living on top of each other. Stuff's close together. It's crazy. He's having a tough time adjusting in school. Meet some expats over there, army brats. Uh, hangs out with this guy, Bow Wow. And he shows him his Hulk car. I think it's a Volkswagen that they sell in Europe and uh, I, might, I should probably should have looked at that closer but uh, you know, he shows him his ride he says hey let me show you where everybody hangs out he shows you how things are done in Tokyo but the drift courses the drift life so they go and have these racing and parking garages everybody's got their cars riced out as hell watch the dance sequence that introduces this scene watch the flow of the camera watch the way it's cut Watch the way everybody's like sped up. Much more energetic than the dancing in the original, is it not? So, he's talking to this girl, Neela, who was in his class. Uh, evil looking Japanese guy, DK, sees this, challenges him to a race. He's like, yeah, sure, I can take you. And it's like, hey man, you know what DK stands for? That's Drift King, you're gonna get your ass kicked. This guy, Han, chill dude. He's like, here, take my car. I wanna see a good show. So it gives the keys to the American. Pretty sweet car, car chase here. I mean, we got a good race and tight sequences here. Well cut. It's set well to the music. People are going up and down. The, well, they're going up the elevator to go see how it's going to end. Really intricate turning. It's really quite cool. 
how they could like power slide through these tight corners of these uh, ramps in the parking garage. Really quite amazing stuff. Well, Sean busts up the Hans car and now he's kind of in debt to him. Uh, Hans sees him after school. He's like, hey, you owe me some favors. Don't act like you have a choice. Once you go into this place, tell this guy with the, with the paw that I here to collect money. Well, he gets thrown around by this big sumo guy with a bear paw tattooed on his back. But then he pays up. And eventually he teaches Sean how to drift. Builds him up a, a drift car. Gets everything rolling. You know, they got more turmoil. It's a simpler story. It's more character driven. It's a bit too simplistic and predictable to really be high art in any way. Uh, I mean, of course, Sean's falling for Neela, overprotective asshole, grinding gears over here. Actually, he does some dangerous shit. Gets Han killed, or is he killed? Because, you know, the guy kind of keeps showing up in these, these movies, and of course that's resolved years later, like nine years later. And it's kind of unfortunate the way how they get called back to this movie, because so much was set up to be like, oh, hey, it's Sean, the Drift King. How are they gonna incorporate him? Oh, hey, you're here. Hi, bye. What the hell? And that's all you really got for him. And that's disappointing because he does some good stuff. You know, they got like a, uh, I think, did they put an Evo engine in a Mustang body and race that against DK's 350? I think that's what they did. Uh, you know, it's, this movie shows the car culture it shows a whole nother slice of life. We got a, a shy, kind of awkward protagonist, but we have some likable characters in the series introduced. Dom shows up at the end after the big race, says, hey, heard you're a friend of Han. When he's hanging out with me, he's in American Muscle Cars. You ready for the race, kid? You would like to see how that race resolved, but nope. Shitty Furious 7 said cut to, man, that was a hell of a race. You're making a movie with over a hundred million dollar budget and you can't show car races. That, it's, when everything's taken into consideration, that's how you get the idea of how bad Furious 7 is. So, yeah, with this movie, we had new life for a bit. Justin Lin put in what, uh, do you go four films in with this? Tokyo Drift, Fast and Furious 2009, kind of a letdown. Fast Five, the best in the series, and uh, Fast Furious Six, whatever they're calling that one, I forgot. You know, it, it kind of hit another one of them crests there. It's like, oh, we're up so high, we can't go any higher. A uh, bit of a dive, Some points here and there. But hey, you know, cars do stuff in this movie. You don't get the sense that it's all CGI. You know, you get some cool shots. Everything's shot better. Everything's edited better. It's just such a matter of craft. Uh, but, you know, winner gets me bullshit. The whole setup at the beginning. You won't watch the Von Fry cut of this. Just cut to that shot in the plane as he heads to Tokyo. Start your movie on that. Uh, as is, I give Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift two and a half out of four stars. 